Good evening, everybody. My name is Kitty Smith, and I want to welcome you tonight to uh, What is Ormus? And uh, I've got a couple of experts on here tonight that uh, know a lot about it. And uh, when people ask me what Ormus is, I have a really difficult time explaining it. So um, I'd like to introduce Chris Emmon. She wrote the book, and she does a very good job of explaining what Ormus is. Um, just to give a shout out real quick to the, the gentleman on the screen right now, Barry. Uh, he did a lot of the research into Ormus, and without him, I don't know where we'd be right now. So thank you, Barry. Um, you, you, you're, you're amazing, and we're really happy to have you. Um, don't blame me. It's your own damn fault. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Chris is the, the author of Ormus, Modern Day Alchemy. And let's see, I want to get that up on the screen real quick. Look here so you can see. And you should all have this book in your library if you don't already. So this is, um, you can see her book here. Is that coming up for everybody? So Chris, um, I'd love to know, I don't think I've ever heard this story before. How did you find Ormus? And um, you know, give us give us a taste on you know what what it's done for you, or why you know why you got so on board with this. I'm really happy to share um, with everybody because you, you're no different than I am. We all have our own path to walk, and when something happens that tags us, our mind focuses in on us. And we have to know more. And that's what happened with, um, with me when I heard Barry speaking in 2003. Ralph, turn it off. Turn, turn my computer off over there. At least turn the speaker off. Oh. Thank you. Okay, so back to, there's a feedback here. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can. Can you just turn mine off? Do whatever. Push the button. It. When we spoke about Ormus and how it causes superconductivity in the body, this was the big piece for me as a pharmacist, and how superconductivity moves at such lightning speeds that that's what was moving our body and all of the, the, uh, the communications within it. Because when I went to school, taught the body electric theory and I never felt that we could move fast enough to play tennis or, or anything just with electric impulses. So I think that's the first thing that grabbed my attention and I had to know more. And then because we believe in the Ormus community that our thoughts create reality, we bring it. And so sure enough, within four months, I met Ormus researchers that unfortunately most people would not get a chance to meet. And I just tacked on them and said, will you teach me? And they did. They taught me about the Ormus material and the benefits. They showed me around their house, their house plants. They talked about the things that had happened to them. And they taught me how to collect it for myself. And that's what I really wanted because you can get, you know, go buy a fish, but it's much better when you know how to fish for yourself. And I never wanted anybody to be able to take it away from me. That was my motivation. There's something here, and I want to always be able to have it at my fingertips. Well, that feeling was so strong of having gratitude that I found somebody, and I knew it how to do it, that I immediately, that fall, I had my first Ormus Lab Day in my house. And I started to have them every year twice a year. And then in 2013, we started to have them every month, except for the summer months. And the whole focus was to teach others so that you would know how to collect it for yourself. And that's where my heart lay, 
because they say that when you feel gratitude that's extreme, you have to turn it into an action that gives back. And that's where my motivation comes from. It isn't enough that I know how to collect it or anybody on the panel here knows how to collect it because that doesn't change the life that I'm living. I need a lot of people to know how to collect it and to realize the benefits so that they'll bring it in their life. Because in the law of one, whatever I do to benefit the world, guess what? It benefits me too. And so we're all connected is to teach and be a bridge of information. And so after I learned from those that taught me initially, then I began an association with um, Don Nance as a mentor, and then he took it you know, up into the stratosphere for me. And the point with anybody who's watching this at any time is that I'm no different than you. And if this is the path that you seek, you go to where the knowledge is. So you go to Barry Carter's website, Subtle Energies, and you start reading. You go to where those who, who exemplify what it is that you wish to be. Because it has been said that if you want to know who you are, you look at the five people who are your best and closest friends or associates and you will have a picture of you. So be judicious as to who you choose to take your lessons from, but do bring it into your world because it does amazing things in plants, it does amazing things in animals, and it does amazing things in people. I was asked to make the book in 2007 because of my personal work to know how to collect the material from different source materials and in different ways. And so the book took 18 months and now it's in the physical. So yes, not only do you need a book, you need two books because you're going to want to share. And how many books have I lost feeling that I was working with people that would remember to give the book back? <laughs> And so um, you need one for your library and one to loan out. So I really believe that if you bring Ormus into your life, you're going to benefit. Now, Chris, you had mentioned something. Um, I, I noticed when I started, I first found your book. It was recommended to me on Amazon. Um, and I went on YouTube to do a little more research and I saw lots of videos on YouTube. I mean, there's a lot of them talking about how to collect Ormus. Aren't they good enough? I wish I had written notes of one that I saw that had you do a plethora of things that I just was absolutely mortified. I was mortified. Really? You know, I do when I read, when I watched that, was say, this has got to be a wag the dog YouTube. And so I do encourage you to take your lessons from those who, who really have the information and have the heart to give you the information to move your life forward. In other words, someone who is not bathing in ego. So you're saying somebody's attitude can actually have a, an effect? Oh, absolutely. There's, um, there's two ways to live life, to realize. This is called conscious living. What I'm gonna share with you, you're not going to learn in our society. Our society doesn't want you to be a consciously aware. It wants you to just focus on keeping a job in your bill. And um, move along, move along until hopefully you'll, you'll pass before they have to give you any social security. So when you are realizing with the consciousness and living life consciously, then you're realizing there's just two ways in life and events in life, and that with fear or with love. Now, when you look at life with fear, you'll know that you're doing that. It is if you feel you always are running out of time, you don't have enough money, life is lack, people are talking about you, um, 
you know, why is it that you have to stand in line in Kmart and why do you have to be the 10th person in line? You know, there's other ways to look at things like with love. When I'm the 10th person in line, I set my feet even with my shoulders because I know I'm going to be standing there a while and I am living in a physical body. And then I am grateful for all the people that are ahead of me that they had the money to buy the things that they felt would better their life. And so again, it's the, um, the rule of one, which means we are all one. And when you realize that we are all one, it changes the whole way that you, um, that you interact with your life. So you either work with love, which is um, building, building, edifying, growing, communications, emotional connections, or you live your life in evil. Evil is nothing more than the type of mindset that would disassociate things, tear things up, make things less than they were. There's only two ways to live life, but you know what? The law of one teaches you that you're going to serve in this physical dimension, this three-dimensional, and you might as well decide if you're going to serve yourself or if you're going to serve everyone. In other words, we're all one. You sound very spiritual, Chris. Have you always been like this, or is this something that you've thrown into? I was a pharmacist making money, deciding the things that I wanted in the physical to make me happy. You know, I had to have the house in the water. I had to have the Corvette. I had to, had to, had to. Um, I didn't, you know, the thing with Ormus is that you're going to decide to bring it into your world, but what you're never going to be able to decide is the outcome. You are not going to be able to decide how it's going to affect your world. It's not, it's going to make changes everywhere in your life, but just like a boat that's heading here, the changes aren't going to be like a power boat that you turn the wheel and all of a sudden you're going 40 degrees in another direction. The changes are going to be subtle, as we call it subtle energy. Even a one degree change in your life over the course of a year is going to put you in a different location. And that's what happened with me. I would go to work and as a pharmacist, I can just use words and it's in my, the prologue of the book. Every day was a battle because I had more prescriptions to fill that were humanly possible. I was getting hits from insurance companies that they wouldn't pay for this, or they wouldn't pay for that quantity, or they wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't. And so you were bringing bad news to people who already weren't happy that they needed the medicine. To be. It was all, you never knew when the next fallout was going to be. And so I armored myself in fear, which means that I was like, just really somebody you can't wait to talk to, right? <laughs> so I took Ormus, and I a year and a half later, I was given the highest award that the company gave for a department. And it was like, wow, that happened because I haven't been the same, but I wasn't being the same way. And what I noticed after I analyzed what happened, um, this would be after because people say, Ormus didn't work for me. Hey, you didn't give it time, T-I-M-E. It's going to take the time it's going to take. But what I realized is I would go to work, and I wouldn't armor myself in fear. I would say, it is what it is. We're doing what we can. You know, we're not shunning, and it is what it is. And that would change my whole demeanor with the customers, with myself, and with my coworkers. So you find that, the biggest thing is that you, um, that I found, and I have spoken to others, is that you tend to find that you live in the present. You're not living in a future which is filled with fears, okay? Invariably, as human beings, will we have enough? I have to go home and do a bunch of I have tos. Go home and clean. Gotta eat. Gotta feed the bird. Got to, got to, got to. And it changes to I get to. I get to clean clothes that I have, that I like. And I get to prepare some food. Life. And so there's a little shift in how you do life. Wow, that's really fantastic. Now you mentioned the bird. Is that the famous cricket? That's the famous cricket. And she gets Ormus every day. And uh, she loves it. And she's my ambassador. Ralph, could you bring me back Ormus? Ormus flew over to Ralph. And um, she's very interactive with people. She is totally different. You can go to the ormusbook.com 
website and look up uh, articles. And you'll see an article that shows Cricket. Um, she likes too. She likes everybody. She's always invited everywhere. Cricket. I have some Ormus if you would like Ormus, Cricket. What do you think? What kind of bird is she? She's a lorry, and that brings another point. Lorries should not like Ormus because Why not? Um, they eat nectar, and nectar is sweet. And so they are a sweet eating bird. So for her to like something that is anywhere from bland to a little salty is no less than amazing because she never touches anything on my plate. <laughs> And so you'll see when you go there to articles what happened to Ormus after we gave uh, her after we gave her Ormus, and we then took thermographic images of her body. And you know what happened to her body, which by the way, thermographic is heat images. So it would take the you can go over there ormusbook.com and read the article. But we noticed that the heat images in her body went down. Really? Now what possibly mean? We were stunned. We just all sat down and said, oh my God. Well, you know, I intuit that she's a prey animal with bones and a lot of air and very small. So they are always on the alert. That's one thing that birds are for, for what can occur them. True. She's my companion and I have her in a safe environment. She still is a prey animal. I'm 2,000 times bigger than she is and everything around the house. But when Ormus allowed her brain to think better, and she stopped being so in a defensive mode and she relaxed. And then the body diminished its energetic signature that we observe. Total opposite in the human being. And you will see the article about thermographic images in the human being over there. Go, go read it. It's awesome. You will see that we fire up energetically. But even more importantly than firing up with warmth, is that the warmth fired up around the points of the chakra. We were amazed. So when you go see the pictures, you'll see more warmth at the back of the head, the throat, the third eye, the heart, the belly area, and in the back, at the uh, lower back, which we do with the kundalini. And now that's so important for y'all to realize, if you really think about it. In the Eastern cultures, we call, call them chakras. In the Western cultures, those areas are tied to glands that are in the body, either a gland or multiple glands. I did not know this. Is you're firing up the glands in the body. Now, what do glands do is everything. They're what keep us going. They keep, they do the, the reproductive sexuality, the hormones up and down. They do the white blood cells. They're always monitoring um, they do the homeostasis to keep enough water in your body and enough salt. And so this is the secret. So if you're firing up the glands, that means you're firing up the energetics in the body to do everything that promotes vitality, including the, the aging aspect, because aging would be the glands not working as they're diminishing. Okay. And then, Mother Nature recognizes that you are no longer useful for reproduction. So you start what we call aging. Now you think of a, of a leaf on a tree in the fall, and it's green. What makes it turn the color? What makes the green, which is the chlorophyll, stop going to the leaf? The cold snap. When the cold snap comes, Mother Nature realizes it's time for hibernation, and so it stops the nutrients going to the leaf. And so without chlorophyll, it's slowly, you see the other colors that are in the leaf that you didn't see because they were covered over. That's doing an aging process too. The reason I say that is if we fool Mother Nature to thinking that we're still a little viable, that she doesn't quite put the aging process into place or into place as quickly. So isn't that exciting? That is exciting, but it does make me worry. I might need to think about contraceptives again. <laughs> now, Chris, there's one more thing I'd like to ask you about. You mentioned the um, Ormus community. Can you tell me what do you mean by that? 
Oh, wow. Clear your mind. Here we go. I'm going to take you on the, probably our last ride before we go on to visit another Ormus aficionado that probably has a lot to share with you, I'm sure. The Ormus global community, I call it the global Ormus family, um, they're all over. Um, it's a grassroots thing because, like I said, society doesn't push the concept of, of, of these things because of their own desire of how they wish us to live our life. And so we meet on these forums and we meet on the Facebook and we chitter and we chatter, okay? And I'm very excited, very excited to say that um, in the Ormus group gatherings that I've had where you come together face to face, you talk Ormus, you show how to collect, you collect together, you're excited about trying different source materials, um, you add a whole different element. So what we've, what we've now, and I'm so excited, we're going to roll it out tonight with you, is that we have created Ormus Groups. There's a website called ormusgroups.com. We just bought the domain um, for that uh, yesterday or the day before. So we're building it. And in ormusgroups.com, you can have your own local Ormus group and be part of the umbrella of an organized system of being together and sharing with newbies. Because my heart is all the newbies. My heart is all those folks who don't know about Ormus because then they're going to have a better life and I'm going to have a better world. Is that <laughs> cool? so When you go to there, we've got an actual Ormus group program that lasts an hour. So it'll be all organized. You'll be together for an hour. If you all want to stay after and talk, that's fine. If you want to get there beforehand and chatter, that's fine. But the program is one hour. You're all doing the same program and then you have a conversation point piece that the chairman will say this is the question and you all share your experiences so you're all learning from each other's experiences and newbies are learning we also have got an item so that the newbies can actually bring the ormus into their world right then and if they bring their ormus into their world when they're not there with the item we have found that this item i have to say it skin firming because you can't make other claims so you'll have to extrapolate what that could possibly mean but I will say that one of the trials because I'm starting trials now so I've got one that's two months out and he, he began to look different big different in a week and he goes to a lot of meetings he's got a plethora of women who have seen me at him at these meetings and they want to know what he's putting on his face because they want some and they're all lined up okay <laughs> Then a month after he took it, a month, a couple approached him after the meeting and said real quietly, hey, we were wondering, who's, who's your plastic surgeon? <laughs> so, the feeling is that if the newbies will carry the item out and use it, then they're going to be so happy that they're going to chirp about Ormus, and the people that they are their associates and their colleagues are going to say, what's that? And then they're going to come to an Ormus group because we are rather insular in our associations on our forums. I'm, I'm breaking away to find, and if it doesn't work, then it wasn't time for it. But if it, if it does work, we're going, to, we're going to have a lot of laws of one that's better for us in the world. <laughs> well, I, I certainly do believe that um, it's time has come. And... Um, you know, it does bring to mind that something that Sharon had mentioned to me before we began this meeting was, uh, you know, we had a, a rather sad event today, um, another shooting, and it, it's it's caught the nation's attention, and it rightfully does upset many many people. I all I can say is, with this substance becoming a part of our life and bringing out in us what I see it has brought out in you, um, we just will see an end to this type of tragedy. So I think you're doing an amazing job and I certainly want to start one of those groups in my town. And uh, Great, because you'll go to the ormusgroups.com. Anybody out there, you don't, if you're new to Ormus, you don't have to be a seasoned, just have a group and then you bring those in. You go to the Ormus 
groups.com, which that website should be up in a week or, or, or a few weeks. We're working real hard to get those pieces in place. And there will be a form which says, I want to start an Ormus, local Ormus group. And then you'll send that to me. And then I'll get you started with what you need. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Chris. And um, with that, I'm going to move over to um, Sharon and bring her in. Sharon is a, I don't, she, Sharon's an amazing lady. I've been on her forum uh, for Blue Rose Essential Oils. And Sharon has an amazing um, knowledge in um, oils themselves. But she's done some incredible work by combining the oil and Ormus and uh, has brought out some new interesting um, you know, things for us to use. So, Sharon Rose, welcome. Hi. First off, that was an inspiring talk, Chris. You just lit my fire here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I was listening to you, reflecting on my own life, and you know, while I wouldn't use the same words, and while my inspiration didn't take me down the same path as you, there's, I felt exactly the same way. All I wanted to do when I first found Ormus was share it with the world, and that didn't go away. At the time, I found Ormus uh, late 2000, and once I had taken my first product, I was so uh, incredibly moved and I had to get Barry out I had to help him um, get the word out and I and we worked together for um, I think uh, about two or three years you know help, help getting him set up with workshops um, anyway thank you for all the things that you've done you know that in those early years I had a vision of a book I didn't know you yet and, and I knew that there would be an Ormus book. It wasn't a surprise to me. Um, I'm going to back way up, because I I'm, will say that I'm a psychic. I'm going to just put it out there and say that, that I'm a psychic. Um, don't, I don't have a, I don't put myself out there for, for sale, or you can't, you know, get a reading from me, but when I found Ormus, Ormus spoke to me. And one of the things that it said when I was standing at the refrigerator door on the second day, taking, having taken Ormus the night before, and I had just taken an ounce of noni juice. And I was, wanted to be taken on an empty stomach. And I'd been told that the Ormus wanted to be taken on an empty stomach. And so I wondered how long to wait between these two substances when Orma said, I welcome the other substance. Now that doesn't, wow. That was, that was pretty wild for me. I mean, I, I kind of freaked out. Um, I thought maybe I was getting into something satanic. I mean, I went through a whole big um, uh, thing about Orma speaking to me, but many years later, I realized that Ormus loves working with herbs. It loves working with essential oils. It loves working with other substances. And that, that little communication still reverberates in my life now. Ormus has led me back to um, essential oils, which I started with, uh, I think it was in 98, 97. Got away from them and now have moved back. And in addition to which I've moved into um, my research with herbs and fixed oils. And one of the things that we've done in the Ormus community is um, praise, elevate, I should say, uh, grapeseed oil because of the association with um, grapes and it being high in the monatomics. Um, grapeseed oil is great, but 
Ormus is in a lot of oils and it responds excellently to many oils. Um, there's naturally occurring Ormus in these oils. I have seen spontaneous uh, anomalies in things such as toasted sesame oil. I mean, from Trader Joe's, this is not anything that is a high-end product. Um, and I've seen, oh, hemp seed oil, of course. Excellent response. And then we have frankincense, essential oil. All you have to do is excite these things with uh, some sort of uh, energetic field, such as EMF, and they will begin to behave much like Ormus does, um, leaking. That is probably the, the best way that I can describe it. They just simply escape the bottle and leak. I have seen um, the sesame, toasted sesame oil um, jump from one location to another, did not leave any oil streaks. It went from a container to another container. Oh my goodness. How does it do that? <laughs> um, I that it's alive. I've I mean, it described that way. I think that it, it, it uh, um, bilocates or something. Um, I've had so many experiences with, with these substances and in, in, in these natural forms. Once I went to a cafe, a, 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 what would you call it, a, a greasy spoon and uh, for breakfast. And I asked for some honey for my toast. Um, I watched the waitress go over to the doorway in the kitchen and pulled the honey off of a shelf. And I could actually see the um, electrical um, box on the wall where next to where the honey was stored. When the honey came to me, it had leaked all over the sides. They had it on a plate. There was a big puddle on the ground. It's obvious that there's Ormus and honey. Oh, um, wow. And, you know, I, I like to say that I met Ormus three times before I found the substance. And the first time it was with uh, blue-green algae from Celtech. Um, that's the first time I had, I experienced um, imprinting. Um, and imprinting is something that happens when Ormus is, hmm, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but when Ormus is, is activated and charged, during that time, an imprint will take place. So when we uh, are making homeopathics, we percuss the, um, the substance. It's during that percussion that an imprint is being taken. And we're hoping in, in that case that the imprint is the imprint of the botanical. Um, I had taken some, I've been using the blue green algae for maybe a year and we went to, drove to Klamath Lake, Klamath Falls in Oregon for a family vacation. And as we're driving, I'm hearing Marta Coleman um, saying, you know, come, you're welcome. And she just kept saying that to come and that, that I was welcome. And that's the first time I heard an imprint in a, what might be thought of as an Orma substance. I didn't know what I was hearing. Um, it's just another thing that happened to me, and I really wasn't in denial still that I was psychic, so I just pretended like it didn't happen. Um, the next time I met Ormus was with um, essential oils, and I put a couple of drops on my knees, and I felt this energy just vitalize me in ways that I had never felt before. Uh, another substance that I met, that I ran into, that I found the Ormus in, was um, something a little more difficult to explain. It's called EM, Effective Microorganisms, and I could feel the energy in it. Uh, when I did the research, I felt it was alive. It was almost sentient. And wow. when I 
when I uh, did the research, there is a, a microbe in this mix that has a spin state. Now that's a key to or when you're talking about Ormus, anything that has a spin state and has a magnetic resonance is something we want to pay attention to. Um, so this, these microbes were very uh, important to me. I was still using microbes, um, EM and, and algae when I found Ormus and I began putting things together. And that's kind of when I, I started doing my research. One of the things that I put together was, um, I was using Ormus inside my mouth. I had a, a chip tooth and um, I thought, well, it, it couldn't hurt and really nothing happened. Uh, and then I, I stopped using the Ormus and I started just using the uh, microorganisms and swished them around. And again, nothing happened, but it couldn't hurt. And then I put the two of them together. Well, within five days, my tooth re-enameled. Now, I'm not the person who, who's um, shown on the, very, on the Subtle Energies website with, that has a, a tooth that re-enameled. Um, I couldn't get a picture of mine, and I certainly wasn't expecting it. So, and it was in the back. It's not like, you know, at the time, cameras were much bigger than they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get a camera in my mouth. But it did happen by combining the Ormus with the effective microorganisms. Wow. And another, that was another instance and, uh, where Ormus combining with something did something extraordinary. Um... And I've just been working with uh, mixing things. Now, I don't know what else I can say. I've worked on this since uh, for about 16 years. That's hard to believe. Wow. But I, that's one of the things that I love about working with new people is they get excited. And it's their excitement. It's kind of like reliving my early years uh, when it was all so new and so extraordinary. Yes, yes, it really, you know, I, you're going back to how far, you know, how long ago you started using this, and it sounds like it's really, there's been so much to discover, and I'm wondering if we've even begun to scratch the surface yet. And no. Now, you gave me kind of a, a it kind of look, went a little over my head when you said something about a spin state. What are you talking about? Oh, gosh. I would have to defer to Chris. I'm the sensitive. I'm the touchy-feely person. I am not the intellectual. Even though when I uh, do research on herbs and essential oils um, and the fixed oils, I, that I know my business. I don't know my business when it comes to understanding the, um, the quantum mechanics of Ormus. But you are saying there are quantum mechanics then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've had experience with... with uh, I was so excited and frightened by that first communication from Mormus that I ran over to the um, computer. And you have to understand that the Subtle Energies website at that time was, was a skeleton of what it is now. And I went over to the scientific page, and I don't read science, but I just started letting my eyes go across the page and tunneling, jumped out. I could feel the Ormus in me leap. And then I'm scanning some more, and it said uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. And when I got to that part, the Ormus rose up inside me and said, I am the way. And the inclination was, or the insinuation was into other dimensions. And Wow. wow. That's, uh... uh, can I explain it? No, I cannot explain it. That's really interesting. You've had several conversations with a substance. Yes. 
and it's not, and I'm, I'm going to back up. I, I have done animal communication. Uh -huh. um, I've done plant communication. And I've had communication with insects, you know, like uh, 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 spiders, um, um, any kind of group insects, ants. There's uh, beehives. You, uh, I understand their unity. Uh -huh. You don't speak an individual um, but when it came to communicating with um, with Ormus it was a whole different realm it was not it was not anything that I've ever experienced before and I don't experience you know there's nothing like it well it's interesting it seems that the analytical medical scientific pharmacist and the metaphysical, uh, spiritual medium have found common ground with Ormus. <laughs> there we go. And 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 Chris mentioned one. You know, it's it's a uh, wow, just wow. <laughs> um, I yeah, you know, I hadn't planned this, and if you don't mind, um, you know, you give up a little bit of your time here. But I was wondering if Barry might like to step in and and mention something about the, the, that spin state and the, the monotone. Can you do that, Barry? Definitely. Awesome. So perhaps I, you can explain this a little. I lost, I lost my computer connection for a while. I had to reboot. Oh. But um, Welcome back. It's, imagine, imagine you're, a bunch of ballet dancers, okay? And they are line dancing, arm to arm, you know, holding hands. And you, you like to see that, but you'd rather see them going into a high spin state, dancing and spinning. Okay in synchron synchronicity, synchronized with all of the other line dancers. And that, I think, is what's going on. We're getting the Ormus um, in a synchronized energetic spin. But it, in order to do that, the metal is the line dancers all holding hands. Okay. But in order to go into a high spin state, they have to quit holding hands. They're not connected as metal. Now they're in a, now they can swing their arms and, and spin. And when they're spinning, they connect in another way. There's something called spin coherence. And that spin coherence is, and this is just hypothetical, but I think that that spin coherence is what has triggered um, a lot of the quantum effects that Sharon talks about, um, where this stuff escapes from sealed containers, where it forms a communication medium for um, plants, animals, and people. Every cell has these quantum coherent, spin coherent, all spinning in the same direction at the same time, uh, atoms or molecules, all spinning at the same time in the same um, orientation, and when they're doing that, they're literally communicating with things far away. Instantaneous, non-local communication. I think that that's what's actually going on uh, with it. But it, uh, of course, a lot of this is just theory. But some of the best evidence in support of that theory is 
Sharon's experiences with the Ormus concentrates from oil getting out of sealed containers. It literally looks like it's teleporting out. Wow. And Sharon has a lot of stories about that. And different salts mixed with different oils teleport out. Uh, could, could you tell us a little story about that, Sharon? Oh, hi. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I have a lot of stories. Uh, it seems that some oils work better are better mediums for the Ormus than other oils. And I'm talking about fixed oils. We tend to disregard fixed oils. We tend to think that one oil is just as good as the other, the next one, and it's not true. I've made um, the last uh, two years an in-depth research on carrier oils, fixed oils. And I've been uh, uh, experimenting with different salts on the same oil. So I might choose olive oil today or hemp seed oil one time or sesame oil. And um, so I've tried different salts. I've tried uh, different oils. It, to boil it down, here's what I've come to. That the oils that have the best are the best medium for the Ormus energy um, are oils that are known to have uh, special um, attributes, high in antioxidants, um, uh, known to be antibacterial, known to um, contain a lot of uh, omega-3. Omega-3 seems to uh, be a very good, um, if you see an oil that has a, a decent omega-3, it is lot more likely to ha have a be a very good medium for Ormus. And when I'm talking about Ormus, primarily I'm talking about uh, the Ormus that is in the raw salt. But this is also true, you can treat, uh, we call it live oil, and you can um, make a live oil using any kind of Ormus, even uh, a wet method, uh, a, a liquid Ormus. Dry Ormus works very well. Um, only use a tiny, tiny bit. I had somebody uh, write to me and say that, you know, after reading something that I wrote or hearing something I said, that they went and poured the whole thing into their um, essential oil bottle, and then the next day uh, it disappeared. All of their essential oil had disappeared. And when we, let me back up, go back to fixed oils. The essential oils is a whole nother topic. Um, so we, I'm also determining that salts um, that are finer grain have a, a, a better impact on the oil. So if you can grind, if you get a large uh, grain salt, um, it doesn't matter when you're making the wet method, whether it's um, a fine grain or, or a coarse grain, but it seems as though the fine grain has more surface contact with the oil. And it seems as though, and I'm just speculating, that perhaps the Ormus that is deeper in, in the, each uh, grain is remaining in the salt. It's only the, the part of the salt that's touching the, the oil that um, infuses into the oil. Um, the, it feels as though the Ormus wants to change states. It likes, it likes to go move into, um, it likes to leave its crystalline matrix and go into an oil state. Uh, from there, if we're talking about essential oils, Ormus seems to like to go into the air. Now, anybody who's using, making a product such as uh, uh, Bill, William Bull with uh, Ormus Tech, uh, he makes the, the toothpaste that I use, and he uses um, different kinds of peppermint essential oil. Um, he says that he can go into his house sometimes, and it feels as though he's walking in to a scented Ormus cloud. He can't see it, 
but when he walks down the hall, he can sure feel it. It impacts him. And he is because the Ormus loves going into the air and it hitches a ride on the essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, if you can contain, if you can keep your essential oil from aerating, then you'll, you'll keep the Ormus from going into the air. This is a little bit tricky. You don't want to um, take it in the car. You don't want to ship it. You know, you don't want to excite it. You want to keep the lid on tight. You don't, you don't want to have it near uh, uh, EMF, particularly the M, the magnetic resonance. And um, so one of the ways that I control what's going on with the Ormus in these oils is by putting it with a little bit of beeswax. The beeswax with, like it puts, um, you know, lead boots on your Ormus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really fantastic. Tell us about some of your experiments. Such as, what are you thinking, Barry? Like driving it around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I did about uh, the first time that I experienced Ormus in oil misbehaving is when Bill and I went on a, um, a road trip. That was in 2010. And we did this really great road trip. And that's when we met Christine and we met DVD and we met um, uh, Thomas Geckler. We met a lot of, lot of people uh, uh, on that trip. And we left, a, traveled about uh, 300 miles when I started smelling um, sesame oil. And we got about 700 miles and I'm like, there's, there's something wrong. I, I gotta go check this out. And I dug it out of my food bin and um and it was leaking so i put it in a plastic bag we got about uh, 11 i think it was a total of 1100 miles and I kept putting it in plastic bags and plastic bags i had three plastic bags on it and that's when i i found it had teleported into the next bin where my I had a, a, a box with the vitamins and my essential oils were in the same box. It teleported over there. <laughs> uh, I had to throw the thing away. <laughs> I had never opened the jar. <laughs> oh, wow. So then when I got home, I said, well, this is interesting. I'm going to have to do some experiments. And I began by uh, testing uh, some essential oils and... Um, I think it was olive oil was the first one and driving around, you know, I said, well, that's how it escaped the first time. Let's try it again. And uh, I took uh, the mileage, you know, I checked them, I put them in plastic bags and checked them uh, to see how many miles before they started escaping. And this is how I quantified which oils seem to um, have the most potential. Now, this may be an assumption, a false assumption. It may be that there's just as much Ormus in one oil that is not acting out, but maybe it just feels more protected. You know, and there's still so many questions I don't know how to answer. Let me get this straight. Was that, were, were these live oils that you had collected Ormus in, or were they just the straight, unadulterated oils? Um, I had initially a uh, um, the, the 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 fixed oil that without anything in it. Okay. And then I had the fixed oil with maybe some dead sea salt in it. Okay. And I had uh, frankincense essential oil with nothing in it, and I had some with um, salt in them. Okay. The frankincense seemed to respond regardless of whether there was salt in it or not. Oh. Um, I have seen um, lavender essential oil um, evaporate, totally disappear when uh, an Ormus salt was added to it. Actually, um, it was more than the salt. Uh, the Star Babies, um, the Star Babies uh, uh, laminar crystals can make 
essential oils just totally go away. Hmm. Uh, Chris knows uh, about uh, those. <laughs> the uh, Star Babies uh, Lavender Crystals um, took a, when we visited Chris in 2010, she had a pool, uh, the Lavender Crystal Pool. I'm telling you, there was, that was the highlight of my trip, soaking in that pool. <laughs> Interesting. Was, yeah. Bill had just uh, gotten over cancer and um, it revitalized him. He had just gotten through chemotherapy and it brought him to life, Chris. It really did. Wow. Well, we're about at the top of the hour and I did want to give anybody an opportunity to um, wow. ask questions. Yes. <laughs> And uh, if anybody is interested or has any questions to ask, I've unmuted everyone and let's go. <laughs> Gee. Okay. I'd like to go. Okay, Mara. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I've received them. Um, Kitty, you know. I've received two sick organ transplants, and I've had um, some bowel issues. And when I started taking the Ormus for the first time, it stopped. We can't hear you very well, Shamara. Can you speak a little bit? Um, the first time that I, my first dose of Ormus. Okay. Um, was when you were with, worked with Chris and Jay. Yes. And he shared with me and my husband. And, uh, he knew our suffering and myself after the transplant of having the diarrhea. Um, they didn't know why. And I was taking some eight different Momodal anti diarrheals and still having issues. My first dose. Swish, 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 keeping it in there. No diarrhea, no diarrhea for the first, you know, the first day. And then the second, the second dose, I woke up the next morning and I had no lower back pain. It was like instantaneously. And that's magic. <laughs> and that's, wow. That is what Ormus is. So magic works really fast in my body and I'm so grateful. So That's great. incredible. Yes, I understand you've had some severe health issues and uh, in, in, somebody's, somebody's musical. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's all good now because I'm in school for medical I'm becoming a master of medical Qigong, and I do three forms of martial arts. Wow, incredible. Well done, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Very it's good. awesome. It's a whole new life. And Ormus is, is, makes it just pop even more. You know, I appreciate and like the colors like are brighter, but with Ormus, it's like, wow. And then it was like, ding. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. That was so, it was like, thank you. That's wonderful. So it's really nice and the connection to my guide. Wow. It brings me closer. So it's magic. That's what I'd like to share. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> so, happy to be involved with the group. And I look forward to a, uh, a process of making. And yes, yes. Well, once we get um, through the summer months, because uh, we usually do this outside, yes. it'll be time to kick it back up again. and. Uh, yeah. Too hot here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is.
Does anybody else have any questions or anything they'd like to share? I do. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Joanne. How are you? Very happy to be here. Very overwhelmed. Very wonderful information and just kind of mind blowing. I guess I'm the new newbie. I guess I'm the newest newbie there is on the call because I'm still in the, the frame of mind that's trying to understand it, analyze it, and know that it can't be analyzed, that it's got the spiritual component and everything else. So I do have a couple of questions, and I'm sort of a work in progress. Kitty, I really want to thank you for having hosted and gotten all your mentors aboard. Oh my goodness, each one of you are gems. I've heard a lot about you even before I heard you. Now that I'm hearing you talk about it, I'm going, well, maybe it's real. <laughs> it's, I don't quite know. I can't feel it, touch it, sense it. I don't have the experience of it yet, but once I do, I will. I'm the type, I've got my very special bottle of Ormus on my altar. I do authentic branding with heart, and my big thing is that I tune into essence of who people are and how they feel and making sure that their, their businesses reflect who they are and everything they do. I'm also a minister and a healer on the side, so I do have that essence part, but there's part of me that's kind of going, mm, this is a little bit new, this is a little bit work in progress because I'm doing a couple of other things. And right now I, I walk by it every day and I say, you should be taking it. And it's like, I don't know why I'm saving it. It's like it's so special that it's almost like I'm honoring you while I'm honoring you. So I, I do have a couple of questions. And as I said, I am a work in progress. And um, it all is very new to me. Uh, you mentioned something about, I guess it was Sharon. You were mentioning about your teeth and the tooth enamel. You got my attention because with all the lime I've been doing to counteract with a different diet, the tooth enamel is gone. So I would very much like to understand exactly what it was that you just combining things. I got a bottle and maybe you can let Kitty be my interpreter because I'm a little bit slow on the, the learning curve here. But I would very, very much like to learn more about that. And also I'm hearing you guys say a couple of times, high spin state. Is that the emotional high you get because you're sensitive and I'm an empath too, so I do feel these things, but is that something that because you're feeling it, you're feeling that you've been ricocheted to the next level, or is this a scientific technical thing that happens with the Ormus itself? Probably both. <laughs> okay. Nothing easy or straightforward, huh? <laughs> Come on, I'm looking to really understand this, to be able to say, I got it. It's really it's, hard to describe in the first place, but wow. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> it's probably spin coherence, okay? You get all, all the mind dancers spinning at the same rate at the same time. I'm sorry, and, what are mind dancers? Are you talking <laughs> well, the mind dancers, yeah. Well, he's, imagine he's, uh, that you've got some... some ballet dancers dancing in a line okay and and they are holding hands they let go and then they spin and and go like into a, a high spin dervishes. state like a whirling dervish yeah okay and that's more energetic it's also coherent because they're all spinning at the same rate at the same time and no, that Thinking that the spinning is happening on a cellular level and that I will be it's a molecular level out of body. Does this mean that I'm really gonna be out of body because it's <laughs> waking up? Is no. that what we're talking about? No, unless you want to. I don't need to on my job here I think is to stay in body so I can bring it down and help others. There you go. <laughs> Joanne. Um, maybe I can address that. Thank you. Um, I found it's much easier to uh, get grounded with Ormus um, because it feels as though whatever uh, spaces or, or um, their spaces are missing get filled in. 
So I can, I can now function at very high levels, but I can still keep my feet on the ground. And so it wasn't like a disconnect, it was a reconnect. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You so want to know that, about the, the teeth, right? Yes, please. Okay. Um, the products that I used uh, 16 years ago are not available now. Um, the, the microorganisms, the EM that I used, is not the same product that it was 16 years ago. Um, but I would look up EMRO, E-M-R-O, Japan. Um, it's called Effective Microorganisms. Joanne, you're in the US? Yes, I'm in Florida. Okay, so then the company in the United States is called Hmm, it's not coming to mind right now. Emro USA. Yes, and that'll direct you. There is a, a company by a different name that's actually um, sells it. The Emro is um, the philosophical, you know, the, the parent company, but they don't sell anything. Anyway, the microorganisms um, work synergistically with Ormus uh, for, for, for plants and for people and for animals. Um, they bring out the best features in Ormus, and I think that uh, the Ormus brings out the best features in the microorganisms. And I just put what I did was uh, uh, take a, a couple of drops of uh, my Ormus. Now, if you're using a wet, wet method, you probably want to make sure you use a product that has as little lye left in it as possible. The lye will want to um, kill the, the microbes. You want it to be closer to pH neutral. And now, um, somebody's going to help you with this. I know, know they are. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, somehow I can head tell head if you're holding your breath. My, my head is just going like scientific quantum. I don't think so. I'm out of here. Uh, you know what? If you want to email me, I, I don't know if you know how to get in touch with me, but um, Blue Rose Essential Oils at Gmail. Okay, I, I mean, can you spell the beginning part of that? I, I didn't get I it. I will all. make sure everybody gets that. Okay. I will make sure. Okay, I'll, I'll walk you through it, okay? Great, thank you. I'm, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm going to be amazing once I understand it. Yes. <laughs> once I go through it, I have the amazing ability of really expressing it in a way that people can feel it. However, I have to tell you that what I'm feeling is so overwhelming that I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I think Christine wants to talk. Let's see. Make sure Christine is unmuted here. There. There you go, Chris. Thank you. I want to say that we all feel that we want to know everything, but we really don't. How many times do you get in your car and turn the key and think about how it's working? No, as long as. So the question really to the, the answer to the question, how does it work is it works great. Do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Too large a concept. That's really good. <laughs> you want to tack it down, though, because seriously, it is magic. And it's magic because we don't know mm. uh, how it works. Everything that we have is intuit intuitive or theories or beliefs. And in the end, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't because it does work. Mm -hmm. If you want to hang your hat on something that you can actually extrapolate as an example, um, take water. Because what we believe about the Ormus materials is that they are the elements that are on the periodic table in a different state. Now they're calling it the high spin state. Well, what is that? It's a frequency. 
And when you have a frequency that matches another frequency, then they create this line dancing that Barry mentioned. And the concept is they're all doing the same thing. It's called a wave, okay? And so because they're all doing the same thing, they get to where they're going really fast because they're just zooming along. If you want to use this as an example that you can hang your hat on, then what you remember is water. And we understand that water is water you drink, and it's liquid. And water is steam you've heated, and it's steam. And water that's in the air that you don't even feel unless you have a piece of equipment in three-dimensional that will tell you in 3D what the percentage is, what we call that is humidity. Water that is frozen is ice. And that's all we are ever taught about it. If we were told the truth about ice, then we would know that there's something more out there. And because we would know there's something more out there, we actually might live life differently. And what it is, is that ice, when it's frozen, the molecules in anything that gets cold and press, they become heavier. Ice should sink. And it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Nobody to this day can explain why ice doesn't sink. The reason that ice doesn't sink is it's not following traditional physics. And that is the same with the Ormus material. It is the elements that are on the periodic table in a different state that is not following traditional physics principles. And that's where we get into these new quantum um, theories and, and principles. Um, in the, so remember water, and don't be afraid of Ormus. It's a state that is an anomalous state according to our three-dimensional thinking. That was very helpful, and you had me when you said it's a frequency state. Once you said frequency, I got it. But until I heard frequency, it was like, uh, not sure. Now, the, I mean, the other thing that I'm, I don't tend to, I tend to be a feeling flowing person as opposed to a very analytical scientific let me do this test with this thing so i can repeat it here so i'm curious and open to see how my learning is going to be coming along and i'm very grateful to you guys and especially to kitty who will be interpreting this as i try and get to a point where i am in have integrated it into my life, I know that it's an important thing here or I wouldn't have stayed on the call the whole time because I know that there's something here. I just know it's a different language that I'm very uncomfortable with and that's okay. I'm certainly looking forward to the benefits of it. Kitty has told me so much about it. It's, it's almost unbelievable and I believe in the unbelievable, so I can get over that. So I'm very excited and very grateful to you all for your time and for explaining this stuff. It was very helpful. The easiest way that I put it is I say, um, do you want to feel better and look younger? Ormus seems to, to help people do that. Feel better, look younger. I'm 67, and people say I have the skin of a 30-year-old. I hope I don't have to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really too bad that with the MLMs and the other healthy drugs and the herbs and the other things that are supposedly pure, but they're really not, it's too bad that they have overused that. Because I, by feeling, I know that what you're saying is so. Um, and it's become so much part of the verbal patter of people around us that when you hear it, you almost don't believe it anymore because everybody's just, mine's organic, mine's, you know, GMO-free and mine's whatever. And it's, it almost 
detracts from the specialness of this, and yet I know on a core level that the ingredients here are from another dimension, from another universe, from another time, being rebirthed and being reminded and being recalled now. I got that. Good. So one thing you, you can also take away from this too is this is no MLM. This is a lot of, a lot of sharing, a lot of teaching, and we really want everyone to be able to get it for themselves. You don't need to necessarily buy it from somebody. And there are ways that we can all learn to bring it into our life. And that brings me to the, the um, next thing I wanted to bring up and that is that at the end of this month on uh, July, what is it, 28, 29 or 28? It begins 29. the 29th, 29, 30 and 31st. There is going to be an international Ormus and Alchemy Convention in California, in Topanga, California. And um, this is the whole reason for bringing these people together so that we could share this excitement and um, start you know, answering some questions, but we also know it's gonna raise a whole lot more questions. So this is a three-day event in California, and if there's any way that you can be there, I know I'm fighting tooth and nail, so I can be there myself, and I'm happy to say I'm going. <laughs> so um, I have a Facebook page that I've put in the chat that you can go to and see some of the details about this, and uh, I also put up Karen's. Uh, website there and I put the website for Chris's book and as Chris says we all need to own two so I'm down one I need to get another book <laughs> so um, yeah this is this is really just the tip of the iceberg and um, there's so much more that I have yet to learn and even the seasoned professionals that are on here seem to feel that there's so much they have yet to learn too that's so, for sure i jo joanne yes do you remember when red delicious apples were actually delicious <laughs> <laughs> it truly is the exception every once in a while you get one red delicious or not delicious i don't buy them anymore What's exactly the, yeah what have they done to it They've depleted the soil of the Ormus minerals by shipping food away from where it's grown. Ah. And not replacing those minerals. They replace nitrogen and phos phosphorus and, and potassium, but they don't replace everything. Do you think they just don't know? They just don't know. Or both. And, and what, I, what I like to do to show people is show, show people my giant nuts. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the large walnut was grown with seawater precipitate. Oh, my the God. The small walnut was grown without it. These were grown a mile from Canada in north central Washington State. How did they so, taste? I don't like walnuts. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry. I tasted this walnut and I liked it. Okay. Wow. I, I wouldn't have tasted it. I only have two or three of them. <laughs> but I'm sorry, somebody wrote down, there goes Barry showing his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this one this one broke at uh, when i took it to a presentation and i only have three or four of the large ones and so i got to taste it and it was several years old when i tasted it and it it tasted good and it's the only walnut i've ever tasted that i liked wow 
And this is one of the things that Barry will, you know, he, Barry is one of the speakers at this event and he will be speaking about Ormus and plants. And it's nuts. And oh my God. <laughs> you can tell who knows Barry really well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if, you know, you have everybody muted and they don't have uh, videos. Is there any one of those that are muted that want to share something? Or ask a question? I've just unmuted everyone. Well, I, I have a question. Okay. Can you say your name? Uh, this is Shamara. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I know, but it closes. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my question is, because of my transplant, my husband is very concerned of the process because of the lie. Okay. Um, is there someone here that can explain that he's not worried that, that how it's all linked out and that it's not in it? That would be for Chris. Thank you. So everybody's afraid of the lie because our common term for a lie is something that we put in the sink. Okay. So we're just scared of that word. Yes. But when you get rid of the word and take what it is, is it sodium hydroxide? Now, sodium is in our table salt. We take sodium every day. Hydroxide means it has an O for oxygen and an H for hydrogen. So it has a sodium molecule, an oxygen molecule, and a hydrogen molecule. Well, you breathe oxygen every day, every breath. And the hydrogen is also in there, so you're breathing that in. So when you're talking about lye, there is nothing toxic about lye ingredients, unlike if you were to eat arsenic, okay? Arsenic is toxic. Sodium hydroxide ingredients are not toxic. Sodium, oxygen, hydrogen. Sodium hydroxide is a very alkaline material. That means it's basic. Just like we know, we know things that are acidic. We know vinegar is acidic. Okay, we understand acidic. We're not as scared of acidic. We put vinegar on our food all the time. Sodium hydroxide is all the way on the other side of the scale, it's very basic. And um, the scientific language for that would mean alkaline. Well, something that's very alkaline will dissolve things. And that's why you put it down your sink so that you can dissolve the clot. That's what's happening. It's very alkaline. What does that mean is it's pH 14. Vinegar is pH 2. So when you're taking your pure sodium hydroxide, it's pH 14. We are mixing that sodium hydroxide with water. So that's our, what we're using. So we're bringing the pH down from 14, but it's still high. It's actually 13 point something. We're adding the pH 13 point something to our salty solution, which is the seawater or the reconstituted sea. And that's generally pH 8.5. So what do you extrapolate that as a normal human being is I could drink some seawater and I might gag and I might throw up, but I'm not gonna die. So that means we can take in pH 8.5, okay? That's for the average human being who can put the two and two together, the understanding, 8.5 is okay. 13's not. We're going to add pH 13 sodium hydroxide to pH 8.5 until we bring the pH up to about 10, no higher than 10.78. Okay, well, that's kind of high, right? Guess what? Milk of magnesia that you drink, okay, you drink milk of magnesia is pH 9.5. So now we know pH 9.5 is not high, high as far as our body is concerned but the pH 10 is. So what do we do after we've done our precipitate? When we dissolve, it goes to the bottom, it precipitates. We pour off the top water that's pH 
10, no higher than 10.5, pour it off, have your precipitate, and put in distilled water. Distilled water is roughly pH 7. We're not worried about pH 7 because we're not worried about seawater at pH 8.5, and we're not worried about milk of magnesia at pH 9.5, and we're not worried about distilled water at pH 7, right? And so we take the precipitate, add the distilled water, and what we're doing is diluting the pH 10, 10.7, uh, no, no higher than 10.78 down. Because we've thrown away a lot of top water. We just have a little bit of top water and our precipitate. And we bring that up with distilled water pH 7. So tell your husband there's nothing toxic about what is in sodium hydroxide. And we are lowering the pH down to where there's nothing toxic from a pH level. That's well, one other one other thing to be aware of is that everything has a toxic level. If you hyperventilate, you'll pass out. If you drink too much water, you'll die. People people can kill themselves with just about anything. Okay? So anything is toxic. It's, it's the amount. It's the level. And basically, the white precipitate is mostly magnesium hydroxide, which is milk of magnesia. If you're really still concerned about it, use the live oil. That's pH neutral. There's nothing in there but edible salt and edible oil. And... It seems to help help uh, with the aging process. It seems to help feel better. It seems to help a whole lot of different things. And it also seems to help meditate. Okay. Everybody was m muted. Yes, I got a, a something happened. It just decided to do its own thing. I unmuted you, and I've got Shamara unmuted. Okay. Yes, Anna. And Chris, I'm going to unmute you again. Yeah, that's right. I got it. Uh, I can thank you both very much. He's, he's here listening. And it was the lie that we were, you know, taught. It's a scary so, word. And, you know, that it was bad for us. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I understand. He understands. I understood. Mm -hmm. I knew it was good, but I wanted to make sure that he, you know, you could explain it so that he didn't worry for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, or thank you. Thank you all. All right, it's 1030, and um, I'm sure you all have families that would like to see your face again tonight. I know my, my dogs would like to see their mama before they have to go to bed. So um, they've been very good. I'm very happy with them. <laughs> but I am uh, grateful to all of our experts that were here tonight. I'm grateful to all of you that came to listen and, and cared enough to learn and enrich your own lives with this and uh i look forward to seeing some of you at least at the in california are you going i am going i am uh getting my aura photography camera and good. i will be bringing that with me good on you and we're going to be able to see ormus in action sweet so with that, I'd like to say good night, everybody. Be well. And until next time, I send you all love and light. Good night. Good night. Good night. Namaste. Namaste.